Well, joining us to discuss is Tatiana Futseva, who is a partner at Hydric and Struggles. Tatiana, thank you so much indeed for joining us. Uh, joining us from Warsaw as well. Um, obviously, an absolutely pivotal city in the support story uh, for Ukraine. Tatiana, I've been to two conferences recently. One was in London about the recovery conference and about how the money comes forward with the private sector uh, for Ukraine. The second was about the military support coming, just come back from Vilnius as well. I thought they were interlinked in many, many ways. But in terms of the former, what seemed very, very clear is that the private sector needs some statewide assurances, insurances, in order to reinvest in, the, in this war-torn country. Good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me here. And yes, it, it was a lot of positive signals at this uh, London conference. Uh, we are waiting some uh, military insurance from MIGA. We are waiting uh, private money uh, from different uh, uh, institutions uh, and uh, um, back to backed by uh, Black Rocks uh, was organized uh, a Ukrainian development fund for, for this purpose. Uh, we full of hope from this uh, conference. Yeah, and my problem is hope over substance in some ways, Tatiana, because I looked at the Ukrainian recovery plan. I read in some great detail about it. And I've got to say, a lot of the recovery stages are based upon the end of the war. And at the moment, having come back from the second conference in Vilnius, I can't see how this war can end anytime soon. So then... Ergo, despite all the best will in the world, a vast amount of investment will be on hold until we get that scenario. I, I just don't know how we get over that. Yeah, it's it's absolutely true. Yeah, absolutely right. Uh, we need money now. We are, shouldn't wait till war will end uh, because uh, 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 our economic uh, uh, economy not survive till end of the war. And very good example, our own Ukrainian companies that not wait until the end of the war. They invest into uh, new products, new sectors. Uh, uh, we have new uh, sectors in Ukraine, military tech, for example. Uh, they are going abroad. They are uh, actively working. 90% uh, of uh, uh, companies in Ukraine are actively work. Uh, they are not put on hold uh, their operation, not withdraw uh, from Ukraine. It's really positive signals for, uh, for future investors. Tatiana, what jumps out to me after all the conversations I've had with uh, various different CEOs from Ukraine and officials is that there is such huge resilience. Even if operations are disrupted, then companies work very quickly to get those operations back up and running again. What have we learned about business continuity in a crisis as a result of this? It's absolutely true. Uh, from early beginning of the war, it was first uh, stopped and then it was transitioned to the action. Uh, we uh, talked to uh, CEOs from different sectors. Uh, we uh, learned and uh, understand uh, how they operate, how they survive. And uh, in this uh, very difficult circumstances, you see that ports are blocked, still blocked. Uh, part of infrastructure are destroyed. 30% so of uh, uh, energy infrastructure destroyed. Uh, territories occupied, but uh, they are working and uh, operating and even launching uh, new businesses. And uh, we talked to, to the CEOs from different sectors and we uh, learned and uh, find some, some insights I'm happy to, to share with you. Um, it's really first priority for all of them is uh, uh, put people first, um, save their lives. It's social responsibility like in a practical way. Uh, then they make very high-speed decisions. Better to make decisions than not to make decisions. Uh, you will not have enough uh, information, and uh, quick decisions really actually uh, save lives. Uh, they got extended power from their headquarters, shareholders, uh, uh, because they understand the situation from the ground, and uh, they can uh, operate quickly. Uh, very interesting fact that uh, uh, cooperation uh, became more important. Uh, we are not competitors. We are Ukrainians, told uh, one CEO us, because uh, uh, they ensure continuity of business. Right. Um, Tatiana, our, let me ask you yeah. a different question then, because what we've seen uh, from Western companies operating in the region, very different responses about how quickly 
They were pulling out of Russia, for instance, early on, some within a matter of months, others trying over several months, and even others still operating on the ground today. But it's had a very mixed response. I think international consumers have felt very awkward about the pairing of some Western companies still in Russia. But then those who have handed over their business have done so at very large discounts, which has effectively lined the pockets of some Russians. I'll cite an example, Starbucks, which has operations in Russia, handing them over to a local Russian, and it's now called uh, something fa fairly similar, Star Coffee, and it was sold at a huge discount. What is the right strategy here as we look at the wash-up in terms of how you extract from a, uh, a country when there is a, a crisis unfolding? Um, we are uh, pushing this company. Uh, we put in a priority to to uh, to tell around the world that this company should uh, withdraw their operation in uh, Russia and these companies are under sanction in Ukraine. Tatiana, just a very quick final question. Part of your, your company's remit is on-demand talent solutions as well. There are over 7 million people who have had to emigrate forcefully, uh, refugees across Europe, 18% of the population as of the latest state stats I'm looking at. Is it a struggle to find people who are wanting to stay in Ukraine, go back to Ukraine, want to or can work in Ukraine, given this enormous refugee crisis? Yeah, it's a huge priority for, for, for our government to attract this workforce uh, to Ukraine. We will not uh, rebuild Ukraine without uh, these workforces. And uh, we will do a lot to attract uh, uh, high-level professionals, like we are working with uh, top managers, but uh, uh, also uh, blue collars, uh, because we need this workforce to rebuild our country. Tatiana, thank you very much for joining us today. Tatiana Fertseva with us, partner at Hydric and Struggles.